Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, welcome. Hello. Much has been said here today, and there's, there's certainly a lot of issues to deal with. Um, I want to address my first concern to uh, hospital funding. It's something that I'm very concerned with, and I come from one of the most rural parts of the state, and uh, we have uh, in Potter County a critical access hospital, Charles Cole Memorial Hospital, and, and uh, I know in the budget proposal um, it's proposed uh, for a reduction in the critical access hospital line. Um, in fact, all of the hospital lines are, are proposed to be reduced. And, you know, those are lines that uh, we're all well aware are, are matched with federal dollars. And, uh, you know, we, the funding was reduced in last, the current year's budget. There was a mid-year freeze. And then now we're proposing additional uh, reductions in those lines. So, you know, I'm concerned about that. Uh, and, and would, you know, invite you to, to comment on, on that particular issue. And then in combination with that, Representative Pickett also brought up the change in payments for OB services. And the particular hospital that I'm talking about is, is the last critical access hospital that actually provides OB services. And um, it's, it's very difficult to continue providing those services. But on the flip side, if, if you don't, the next nearest hospital is 50 miles away. So, and I know that you touched on the issue. I know that you said you were aware of it. Um, and I know that you, you talked about managed care coming in. Uh, but we have to provide these critical services. So I think we have to look very closely at the level of funding that we are providing for these hospitals and the services that they are providing in some of these regions of the state. And I'd certainly welcome your yeah. comments. I just wanted to make a comment on the funding for the hospitals, a separate line item for the supplementals such as the uh, critical access or the academic medical centers or physician practice plans. The funding in 1213 is actually kept at the same level as 1112. The 1112 numbers have the budgetary freeze in them. All we did is after the budgetary freeze, we continued the same level of funding in 1213. In the budget presentation, it may look like a reduction, but it is actually the same amount of funding in 11-12 carried forward into 12-13. There was no reduction in... Okay. We'll certainly be taking a close look at those, at those numbers. I also wanted to talk about the issue of pharmaceutical services, and I'm hearing a lot from my constituents about the, the uh, six prescription limit that, that was uh, uh, enacted at the beginning of the year, and, and the difficulty that uh, pharmacies in particular are having accessing your pharmacy call center. I wrote you a letter detailing the situation over a month ago and haven't gotten a response back from you yet uh, with some very detailed information about the difficulty that uh, pharmacies are ha having accessing your call center, the difficulty that mental health providers are having uh, to get authorizations to uh, to get these uh, necessary medications. So I'll look forward to your response. Um, it's something that I think is, is very important um, and, and something that I'm really looking for a response on so that we can address the issue. I don't know if you're having a problem inside your call center. I think just as a note, we did have some issues when we first implemented the call center at the beginning of the year, the volumes of the calls. But we have since beefed up the staffing on the call centers. And I think if you look at the response time now, it's, it's a lot different than what was occurring at the beginning of the year. But we will get you back a response on the specific questions. It's, I look forward to your response on that because it's something that's, that's very important. And, you know, in talking about pharmaceutical services, I, I had the opportunity to talk to my local pharmacist uh, last week, and she brought an issue to my attention dealing with uh, authorization of pharmaceuticals and, and the fact that uh, oftentimes when people come in with prescriptions, uh, and, and this just happened last week where someone came in looking for a prescription, it was a generic uh, medication, and they actually could not get approval from the system to fill that, that generic prescription. They had to fill it as a, as a name brand prescription. So there was a difference in cost. Just in this case, of the generic would have cost $15. The, uh, the name brand prescription was $80. And that's just one example. So if, if that's happening over and over again, I can see how that could snowball into very, very significant cost. And I'm wondering, do you have, is there an issue with your system and where, whereby it would force people to, uh, to go with brand name prescriptions as opposed to generics? I think one thing we, we have to look at, I'm not sure if it's the exact answer, is that we get significant rebates on our brand name drugs to the point where we may get more of a rebate 
on the brand name drug than we will for the price of the generic. I'm not sure if it's the issue with the approval of the specific drug in question, but it's one of the reasons why we may go with more brands over generics. So you're saying that you would save cost by going we, with the brand name? We get name? the rebate at the back end of the proposal. Once we build the manufacturers for the rebate on the brand name, we get a pretty high rebate on those brand name drugs. Okay. I also want to add my name to the, to the list of people who have talked today about the issues with the aging waiver and the concerns that the AAAs have. Um, we're all hearing from the, from the AAAs, and, and uh, I'll certainly add my name to that list. I also want to, uh, my last issue, um, you provide significant funding in your proposal for the Adult Pro Protective Services Program in your budget. Can you speak to the uh, recent efforts of your department and really the status of that program? And, and specifically, you know, how does this strengthen our long-term care system, particularly you know, home and community-based services for people with disabilities? We have had a system in place for many years for protective services for children and for elders, but there was no real targeted service for adults with disabilities and the law was passed I believe in 2010 and we did everything possible to ensure that there was funding in this budget so we could begin implementing we have an interim process in place but we're hoping by July and August we begin the the process of establishing a unit to be able to really focus and take calls for this population. I think uh, everyone has been pleased with the efforts of the department thus far on that implementation. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, 